turn to the book of John. John 6, we'll go, John 6, 66. John 6, verse 66. John, yeah, John 6, verse 66. As Jesus was walking with the disciples, along the way, they, they got more disciples to follow him. We we'll read from John 66, verse 66. From the time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So a lot of people that were following him, they decided not to follow him anymore, because they obviously thought some of his teachings were hard. They were offended by them. And um, yeah, we go from 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, because the twelve disciples were the only ones that remained. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? That's 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Now this is the most powerful part. Peter said, To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. 69. We believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. So as you come to church today, that you're not just serving any God, you're serving the only one true God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we all please stand as we pray and open our service? Let's go, let's go before the Lord and thank Him for everything that He's done upon our lives. Let's go and pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this morning. Father, we 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 thank you for this morning.
You can wear nice clothes, but the relationship is stained. They've got issues there. Inside you are broken. That's why again, maybe these two weeks, I'm going to come with this topic on the relationship. How can we measure the relationship? Especially those people are close to us when they offend us. It really hurts. Now, relationship is the way in which two or more people or things are connected. Relationship is the state of being connected. The state of being connected by blood or marriage. That's why you've got siblings, that's why you've got uh, couples. You are connected to a particular relationship. And when that relationship is sick or is weak, you don't feel good when you are driving your car. You can ask your wife, sister, or your brother, it's good, but inside it's not good at all. In the way in which two or more people or groups regard and give towards each other. Every side of the church can come here. We are linked together. We call this church the family church. You can see like Sister Sophie driving from Jilok to come to worship here. Why? Because she is a part of this family we call gospel family church. Then here you can see for this many more definitions here. You found there is a connection, there is a relation, there is association, there is a link, there is a bond, there is attachment. And if if you check your relationship, if you don't have this element, then your relationship is sick. In the relationship, there must be that connection. There must be that relation. There must be that association. There must be that link. There must be that bond. There must be that attachment. Now I'm giving that a background here, brother and sister. When the relationship is weak, even to preach, you can't preach. You feel like, should I go to preach? And that was a problem with so and so. I'll define here the nature. Because the topic here we are talking here this morning is about nature relationships. Then you can ask me, Pastor, what is the meaning of the nature, spiritually, even in the Bible? Nature is to care for or protect someone or something while they are growing. That if you want to nurture a relationship, you must make an effort to care and to protect that relationship. To make me to grow. But there are people who are, they choose, they are specialized to this whole relationship. They feel good when the relationship are, you know, they can create a situation to make a, a relationship to become weak. And that person, she or he, will feel good. She can prophesy over your life to say you not succeed. You, you, you have problems. But I tell you as you are listening to me to this teaching, you say, I, I pray that my brother, my sister will care for me and will protect me as I grow. And when you've got that the attitude, we call that the nurturing a relationship. Nurturing is to help, is to encourage the development. Then if I'm good, doing well, you can say that the pastor you're doing well. Ah, that is good. But when you live with the people every day, it's only negativity, negativity. Even your soup you cook, you put a lot of salt because the relationship is not there. When the relationship is uh, sick, even in the family, you can cook a good food, people do not appreciate your food because the relationship has got a problem. Hello? <laughs> Nurturing is to cherish. It is a hope, belief, ambition. You cherish your brother and your sister. You are part of her, of her or his success. You are, you are doing good, my brother. I'm behind you. I'm praying for you. We want to have those people in our church. They cherish other people to succeed. Hallelujah. Then which I put that nature, I put it to care is to attend to the need of people, is to look after, is to support, is to rise, is to foster. Hallelujah! Then you can reflect on your own journey. Who foster your relationship? Who is caring for you for, to grow, to develop, even spiritually? Who called you by week to say that a pastor or oh my brother, I'm praying for you, I'm with you in that situation. Check your mobile phone by week. How many messages do you receive for somebody who can call you or send you a message, sister? I'm standing with you in 
prayer. Hallelujah. That's why I encourage people here, even the, the worst of our church, I say, God, why people, they put a beautiful message, I can see there, some people are, few are active. So people can then post something good to show love, to show cherishing the relationship. But everyone has got a mobile phone, can't say even a yes, can't even to confirm, can't even affirm, can't say, sister, I'm with you. Hallelujah. Let me a church where we can cherish the relationship. We are naturally in the relationship. Now, I'm going to point number one. Relationship with God. Relationship with God. That's what we read this scripture of John chapter 14. And verse 17. We read it very well. He said that you didn't choose me. I have chosen you. I no longer call you servant. I call you, you are my friend. God himself said telling you that you are my friend. Because he can see the relationship. You spend time with him. And the God himself, he look at you, you say, Matthew, I no longer call you as a servant, but you are my best friend. That's why I put those scriptures the other day. Relationship with God. You need to make sure that relationship with God. In John 1 12 said that for those who receive the word, he gave them power to become children of God. You have given the right to become a child of God. It's a relationship with God. My prayer to you, sister and my brother, are listening to me today. Nature, cherish your relationship with God. Challenge will come, but first, cherish your relationship with God. You know that John 3 16, very common. For God so loved the world, and He gave you, and you know that scripture. God has already decided to love you. But it is your responsibility to return that love towards Him. He said, God, I just love you. I love you, God. I love you, God. And now, how can you nurture the relationship? I put some few points there. You can nurture your relationship by reading the word. By reading the word, you start to nurture your relationship. I don't know about you, I can read some scriptures like newspaper, but another day when I read that scripture, it will hit my heart. I will take again my highlights and start to highlight again. Why? When you are reading the word, you nurture your relationship with God. If you are a Christian and you spend the whole week without even reading a verse, then you can't nurture that relationship with God. Hallelujah. Then we nurture the relationship with God when you start to do your Bible study by yourself. And even when we come here on Friday, we are so blessed. I don't know what was the topic. The topic last Friday was a dependence on God. And the one brother said was sharing that. Everybody, everyone wanted to give even the perfect testimony. To say, I, I depend on God. I've developed the relationship with God. But what look what God did in my life. I can't say this was not the uh, second people. People that want to give testimony of all their own secrets. So that I have dependent on God. I have a relationship with the master. And then look what I can do. I saw the testimony of out of that relationship. Hallelujah. Dependency on God. It's another word. Relationship with God. Then I put something there for you. When you are reading the Bible, it's the greatest way to fill up your mind and the heart with God and His words. When you are reading, it is the greatest way to fill up your mind and the heart with God and with ways. For those who are watching movies, could be movies of sports, I'm not judging anybody, but I'm giving an example here. You can be even in a church, but your mind got a program that watch movie. And you finish one, that's why they give you again, no, 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 it's around 1 at 11 p.m. And your mind is so busy for the movies, but your mind is not busy in the things of God, which can nurture your relationship. Hallelujah. I'm not judging, I'm giving that an example, that the mind here, when you start to read the word, you fill your mind and your heart, then you don't have other programs with your mind, but your program with mind is to serve God. Hallelujah. Listen to this, say this. with God. He will speak with you through his word. There may be some challenge in your, in your life. Some people, they have even gossip you or, or, or accuse you, allegations and so forth. Your mind can be people with all those negativity. But when you decide to read the word, say God, let them speak. But not God, you are my God. You start to read the scripture, say no, 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 no. I will bless you. I am with you. I will fight on your behalf. You start to be the end. That should be your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Then if you come in the church, Agenda 
c'est ça que des nerfs de ici, des nerfs de saut et à plein. Par des fonds d'un set démontré. Oui, il t'a tenu bon. Parce qu'on est en Afrique, God is you a plan. C'est ça, c'est Matthew. You shall go to Australia. You shall go to Canada. You shall go to France. It's a plan of God. And those plans are in the Bible. Hallelujah. God will tell you, I'll give you husband. I'll give you wife. I'll give the children. You may spend the three years without the child. But the promise of God are there in the Bible. Hallelujah. You claim them when you are reading the Bible. Let me go back here. He will be. He will. Your life will be purpose and love. Take what God says in the word. Begin applying it. Living it and ask God to pour his peace, his promises, his gifts, his blessings out in your own life. Brother, you can't go. When you are reading this word, I'm repeating this. God, you take what God says in his word. You begin to apply Shit. 
You read the Bible, number two, you pray. There is no relationship which can grow without prayer. I wonder, there are people who are so busy, they can't come on Friday. Yes, you may have your choice. But for us to come on June to Friday, every Friday, I wonder, I mean, I check. I check the relationship about in America, in Canada, in Europe, in Africa, here. I said, well, why am I available every Friday to come here? Why so people are so busy, they can't love God in prayer? Now listen, pray this. Prayer is asking God, the creator of heaven and earth, all that is in it to come into your life. Now when you are praying, you are asking me, oh, what is in God? That's why we say one, two, three, I believe in it. The meaning of that, you ask God, what tell what is in your store of God? I believe and I receive it in Jesus' name. And yet I'm saying prayer is asking God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, all that you need to come into our life and they give us what is here.
this brother and sister. And I repeat, whatever I have here is not from my siblings. Whatever I have in my life, the people who have blessed me is because of this second point here. Relationship with the family of the Lord. Relationship in the church. And I'm reading now Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 10 says. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows the spirit will all will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, I want this. This is what I underline in my Bible. That's why I underline this in my Bible. Listen to this. I'm repeating this. to those who are of the house of faith. Amen. I'm repeating this brother so that I can before I start to explain. He said this. This is Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 said this. If you want to bless people, you can be the houses for your family member. It's fine. But the Lord said this. Especially to those whom you share the faith together. The same church. Mm. Then when I see a sister, a brother of gospel power ministries, she or he is in need. My heart should be moved with compassion to say, how best can I support this sister? How best can I support this brother? That's why I'm reading this thing, he said this. Therefore, as we have opportunity to let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Then the relationship with a believer in the church, your brother, I ask you who are listening to me, even those who will be listening to us on YouTube, Treat your brother well. Treat your sister well. If you share the same fire, if you share in the same house, treat them well. Then we should do, make an effort to love my sister, to love my brother. And if your number here, don't have a number, put your number on the WhatsApp, put the leader, she's sister, please maybe don't have my number, you give. Because the Bible said that we should first love the people we share together, love together. I'm reading again, say this. In verse 2 of Galatians chapter 6 says this, Bear one another's burdens, and they so fulfill the law of Christ. If one brother she not doing good, my sister she not doing good, good, you pull her up. You say, brother, sister, I am with you. You say, bear one another's burden, so fulfill the law of Christ. Sustain, forgive, love, bring strength. And that's why you found people, some of them may come to the church, they've got only agenda to come to this whole relationship. And they feel happy on that. Some they will only come in the church with a mission to distort the relationship. But I pray to you, sister and the brother, pray. That's all God. Ah, oh, when I see sister Linda says she is my sister. When I see brother Denise, I say, brother Denise. Sister. The first scripture here puts it, 
Jean for the squad to fall. See how Jonathan and David, they love each other. Put it down, First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. These are the scriptures to underline. You start to say, God, I, I invite Jonathan into my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Is there? That is Samuel. Then let's go now. Can we read together here? One, two, three. Now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. Can we stop there? Knitting, you know the meaning of knitting? It was there together.
soir.
것입니다. 할렐루야! 나마세벤치, 브릿지. 그런데 우리 와이프 우리 두 개다. One, two, three. Did things. I don't want you. That's your love. One, two, three. 부자 두 개다. 기도와 부지. 할렐루야. 저기 생각하고 부지 나. 브랜드나 오브린데 세리 남아, 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 주, 나, 넥스 산데.